everyone. I think it's getting kicked off now. Hope you guys are doing well. I don't think this is going to be quite as long today. Of course, I always say that and then it turns into a long thing. Um, <laughs> but this is your pick. You guys picked this topic. And so I wanted to hop on and do a live today um, just so that you guys could ask questions, you know, be on here in case um, something came up. But we're talking about our topic today is signs of an unhealthy friendship. Signs that you can look for in your life of an unhealthy friendship. And what I want to say before we even get into this is I think that sometimes we need to actually take that light that we're trying to put on other people and shine it on ourselves and ask ourselves, am I a healthy friend to those around me? You know, because I think that that is actually a really great place to start is to kind of put that spotlight on ourselves and to go, okay, am I actually walking in this myself too? Because a lot of times we're looking for per perfection from other people, but yet we're not walking in it ourselves. And so I think that with all of this, I think that we need to demonstrate grace towards people because people have busy lives. And a lot of times they're not purposefully meaning to be ugly towards you, okay? Um, a lot of times people are just very caught up with their own life and what they've going on. A lot of times people are not even thinking about you and that's not to be ugly towards you, but they've got obligations. They're trying to go to work. They're trying to raise a family. You know, they've got a spouse that they're trying to keep up with. You know, they've got family members that are sick. People have life going on. And especially, you know, when you're really adulting, when you're really, um, getting up there, you, we've got obligations as adults, right? And so I think that, yes, good friendship you make time for each other um, but you've also got to give people grace sometimes stuff is going to come up sometimes things are going to happen but it's the patterns ladies and gents that you need to watch for okay and so if you see a consistent pattern of something coming up that's more when you should watch for but if it's an occasional thing where they you know have something come up or where they kind of act inconsistent towards you you know once or twice that's a different story okay that could just be they've got life going on they're not trying to be ugly they're not trying to do anything towards you they are just living their life like we all are and sometimes things happen so i think it's important to show grace before we dig into this topic and what I tried to do today is I'm going to keep this super simple. I've got seven point, no, I've got seven, eight, nine, ten, about ten points um, that I wanted to walk you through today. And so what I've done is I've paired a character trait of an unhealthy friend directly to a scripture that I wanted you guys to see from the Bible. I truly believe that the Bible is the best way for us to define what a healthy friendship looks like in our lives and for us to examine ourselves and to say, am I being a healthy friend to the people around me? Now, a lot of you guys, I've heard this in the past too that comes up quite a bit. They're like, well, where are the healthy people? You know, it just seems like I just keep running into all of these really unhealthy people in my personal life and I don't have as many friends as I want to. Well, I want to tell you guys something really simple and really profound that one of my mentors taught me back in the day. And she said this. She said, if you want to have more friends, be a friend to someone. Hello? How easy is that and how incredibly powerful is that? If you want to have more friends, go be a friend to someone. Go invest in someone else's life. Amen? You know, look for ways to bless people. Look for ways to love on people. And, you know, she as a person, my mentor back in the day, she had such a profound way of doing this. Like she just attracted people to her like a moth. And it's because she knew how to love people so well in her personal life. So for example, she'd go out to a restaurant and she would just look for a random stranger to buy their meal. And then she'd strike up a conversation with them. You know, it's such little things, quote unquote, that we would consider kind of little that can show people that they're loved. You know, go out of your way to tell your current friends how much you care about them, how much you appreciate them. You know, people notice this stuff and we all get so caught up in the daily grind and we get so caught up in the busyness of our lives that so often we are just looking for people to say hello I see you and I care about you amen and so if you can be that light to someone else if you are feeling very isolated and if you're feeling like you don't have friendships pray about this you guys say God I want more healthy friendships in my life and show me God not just you know who's going to benefit me but show me who I can go and benefit show me who I can go and love on today who can I bless today you know maybe you're in a drive through and you can pay for the person's meal behind you you know what can you do for someone else where you're not expecting anything in return where you can love on them where you can bless them you know maybe there's a team that you know of that's going through a hard time and you can offer to be a listening ear go take 
take them out to lunch, start to mentor that person. You know, you can find opportunities. So often we wait for opportunities for friendship to just kind of drop in our lap right? But God's saying, no, who can you go be purposeful to bless today? Who can you reach out to? You know, and that's a lot of times how these really powerful friendships start. And I think that sometimes we have to take an attitude of going into something in order to be a blessing instead of just to receive. Amen. So there will be some relationships in your life where you need to be a mentor. Okay, maybe you're on another level than that person is on and the purpose of you being a part of that person's life is to help to train up the next generation. Hello, who am I talking to today? And so that should be some of our friendships. Some of our friendships should be closer, those confidant relationships, you know, those that are really close to us. And sometimes we're just doing outreach to all kinds of people. You know, I wanted to preface with this before we get started. Jesus had a fantastic model when it comes to friendships. And I, this is kind of how I model friendships in my life. So here's what he did. Jesus outreached and loved on everybody, regardless of what place they were at. He just loved on people. Jesus was fantastic at that. He met people where they were at. However, this is what Jesus was also very cautious about. Jesus did not let just everybody into his close circle. Who am I talking to today? <clears throat> Jesus had the disciples as those that he poured into, as those that he allowed to, you know, encourage him and to stand by him. And he guarded those very close friendships and relationships very carefully, all right? Because those were the people that were feeding into him on a regular basis. And part of what we're going to learn today, you guys, is that your friendships influence more about your life than you know. There's a silly quote that I've seen going around for ages. You guys have probably seen it too. But it talks about how you become like the people that you spend the most time around and that is 110% accurate. You guys may have even noticed that with your close friendships or acquaintances in your family you start to say some of the exact same phrases that they say and you never said them before you hung out with those people. That's because stuff rubs off ladies and gents. Stuff wears off and so if we are surrounding ourselves by those who love Jesus and our close friend group and those who are taking us higher and those who are really sharpening us in a good way we're going to be much more likely to see forward progress in our lives. And I think that so often we tend to think that who we hang out around doesn't have that much of an impact. But I want to tell you, ladies and gents, it has more of an impact than you could ever realize. And so again, I want us to take this perspective today of examining ourselves first and saying, am I a good friend to those around me? But also just examining your close friendships. And I want you to understand today that sometimes friendships are seasonal. Amen. Sometimes friendships are seasonal and that doesn't mean that they're a bad person. That does not mean that you are a bad person. It just means that sometimes friendships come into our lives for a specific time period and for a specific purpose with God. Amen. And so you've got to be careful not to confuse a seasonal friendship, a seasonal relationship with a lifelong commitment. Amen. Because sometimes God will introduce people into your life that you need them and they need you for a season. Okay, but it doesn't necessarily mean that that's supposed to be a lifelong thing. All right. And there's a lot of reasons for that. You know, I experienced this um, with a friendship back in the day. We were friends for years in a particular area. But then this friend decided to make a decision in her life where she was going to be disobedient to God in a very important area. And, you know, I was still holding down the fort. I was still trying to be obedient. And, you know, God, he was the one who separated and broke off that friendship. And, you know, it was something that just kind of happened. It was not something that we had the force per se. But, you know, a lot of times when God separates a friendship in your life, it's not because they're a bad person. It's not because you're a bad person. But it's because he knows that it could cause a negative impact on your life if you were to keep going with that relationship moving forward. And sometimes even the same for them, you know. Um, and sometimes it doesn't even mean that one or both of you have done anything wrong. Sometimes it's just time to part ways with that friendship for a season. You know, I think it was Paul and Barnabas, I think it was in the Bible, um, who, you know, they hit this point in ministry where they disagreed on something major. 
And, you know, it says that they both ministered and they parted ways and they were both still affected for the kingdom of God. And so, you know, just because your season, your time with a friendship is done, does not still mean, does not mean that God can't still use that person mightily in a powerful way and does not mean that he cannot use you in a very powerful way, ladies and gents. And so I think that is really important as we dig into this conversation is to always be very careful how you treat people. Okay, you never know when you're going to need that person down the line, when that thing could come back around you guys. And so be very careful how you break off friendships. Be very careful how you break off relationships in your life. Try to do it with as much respect as you can, ladies and gents, because you know what? God cares about the people in your life. And you know, sometimes there will be times when you have to cut ties. Sometimes there will be times when God causes you to go in a different direction towards people. But I always like to say it's so simple, but treat people the way that you would want to be treated. Hello, who am I talking to today? You know, always consider the other person before you have that phone conversation, before you send that text, before you send that email. Think about stuff before you act, ladies and gentlemen. And always ask yourself, how would I want to receive this conversation? Amen. And sometimes it's even just you've got to think about that with regards to like maintenance conversations in your friendship. You know, if you need to bring up a sensitive subject, always think about, you know, if I were on the receiving end of this, how would I want to receive this in a healthy way over my life? Amen. So let's dig into this today. Signs of an unhealthy friendship. Um, I'm going to say hi to people. Hi, Edgar, Fahim, Jesse. Um, and I know I'm butchering these names. Hey, Shane. Hey, Tahira, Rhonda. So good to see you guys. Um, so let's hop into this today. Okay, so number one sign of an unhealthy friendship is that person is unreliable on a consistent basis. Now watch and remember, guys, we're looking for patterns with this, okay? So if they just don't show up one time because they had something big come up in their life, that's not what I'm talking about, okay? I'm talking about they blow you off every single time, all right? Or they never show up on time or they never communicate with you. That's what I'm talking about when I say unreliable, okay? Um, and I wanted to read you Proverbs 18, 24. It says, one who has unreliable friends soon comes to a ruin, but there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother, okay? So are they reliable towards your friendship? You know, it, it takes two to tango, y'all. You know, and so if you're the only one putting in all the effort with this stuff, and if you're the only one showing up on time, if you're the only one reaching out, all of this stuff, you guys, that can really, you know, take a toll over a while. And that's not a friendship. That's a one-sided thing, you know, where the other person is getting all the benefits and all that stuff. And so you've got to ask yourself, is this person unreliable towards me? Can you count on that person? You know, if you had a life crisis happen in your life, could you know that you could pick up the phone and call this person and they would be there for you? You know, unreliability in your friendships can be something that is really detrimental and it can really cause a lot of negative feelings to rise up on you if you are the reliable one. You know, it can cause resentment. It can cause all this stuff that if we don't deal with it quickly, it can cause major issues down the line. Amen. So unreliable friends. Okay. Number two, they're only for you when they can get something out of it. I like to call these the moocher friends. And I'm sure you guys have experienced this before. And so they won't talk to you, they won't hang out with you, but the moment that they need something, the moment they can benefit from something that you have to offer, they suddenly appear on the scene, they suddenly show up, okay? And so again, this is this very one-sided kind of a thing going on here that you've gotta be very careful about, okay? So Proverbs 17, 17 says, a friend loves at all, times and a brother is born for a time of adversity okay so are they loving towards you at all times you know in friendship just like in relationships there's a give and take that's got to be there you guys and so if one person is doing all the giving if one person is doing all the encouragement if one person is doing all the reaching out you know that's a problem okay so there's got to be a give and take there's going to be times in a friendship when you need to give a little when it's inconvenient for you and there's going to be times when they need to give a little when it's a little bit inconvenient for them. And so if they're only for you, ladies and gents, when they can get something out of that friendship, that's a big problem, right? Okay. So a friend loves at all times. And what that means is they are constantly there for you. Doesn't mean they have to put their life on hold. Doesn't mean they have to be at your beck and call 24 seven. But what it means is they're not just for you only when they can get something out of it. They have a humble heart. They have a servant's heart. And there is that natural give and take in the friendship that helps it to be more stable and healthy, okay? 
Um, number three, this is a really big one, sign of an unhealthy friendship. They don't walk in wisdom in their own life. And you might say, Jill, well, what does that have to do with our friendship? It has everything to do with your friendship, y'all. This is important, okay? So if they don't walk in wisdom in their own life, stuff rubs off on you. Let's go back to what we were talking about at the very beginning of this, okay? Stuff rubs off. And so if you are constantly hanging around a friend who is involved in activities that are not of God and who just doesn't use wisdom in their life, that has the potential, not even just the potential, it will impact you in a negative way in your personal life, okay? So you've got to look for people who are trying to walk in wisdom, who are trying to live by the Bible, and who are trying to honor Jesus for those close friendships in your life, okay? Proverbs 27, 9 says, oil and perfume make the heart glad, and the sweetness of a friend comes from his, listen to this, you guys, earnest counsel, amen? So you've got to ask yourself about the friendships in your life. Is this a person that they would provide me with good counsel, or would their counsel lead me off track? Would their counsel actually put me in a bad place in my life. And so, you know, you've got to look for people who are walking in wisdom in their own walk with God, because listen, ladies and gents, that stuff rubs off. Amen. I wanted to also remind you of another scripture that's very important today. This is 1 Corinthians 15, 33. It says, do not be deceived. Bad company corrupts good character. And that's a very common one. You guys hear me quote that on this page quite a bit, but I think it's critical. You know, I think it's interesting that scripture used that word deceived. And it says, you know, what what is deception? Deception is when we think we're doing okay, but we're really not, right? That's what deception is. We think we're on the right path. We think that we're okay, but really we're being disobedient. Really there's something going on that is causing us to get off course in some way, shape, or form. And we already talked about in the live yesterday how, you know, Satan is described in the Bible as being the deceiver, okay? So a lot of times what we do is we deceive ourselves. Who am I talking to today? And we go, I'm fine hanging out around this person on a regular basis who's involved in all this stuff. You know, they're hooked on drugs, alcohol. They're talking to multiple people, multiple people at once or being unfaithful to their partner. You know, they're doing all this stuff in their lifestyle. You know, they have no attempt to change. You know, there's no remorse, none of this stuff. And you go, I can hang out around this person. It's not going to impact me because I know where I stand with God, right? And so we kind of get this puffed up attitude about ourselves where we believe in ourselves a little bit more than we probably should a lot of the time, right? And so we go, because I'm cool with God, I can hang out around this on a regular basis and it won't influence me. When in fact, scripture we just read says that bad company will corrupt good morals, okay? It's not, an, it's not maybe on this, you guys, okay? And so you've got to be very, very careful who you are associating with on a regular basis because a lot of times we deceive ourselves. We think we're good and yet we're still hanging around this bad crowd and we're wondering why it feels like we're constantly in a place of strife, why it constantly feels like our lives are falling apart, ladies and gents. And so you need to be careful. And I want to say that not all people are perfect. You're not perfect. I'm not perfect, okay? So it's unrealistic to look for perfect people and perfect friendships. However, it is very realistic and something that we should try to obtain godly friendships, people who are trying to chase after the Lord and our close friend circle, people who are trying to live by the Bible. And you know what? It's not to say that you have to agree with every single little thing that that other person believes in. You know, I think this is a common misconception that I see going around a lot of the time, too, is that in order to maintain a healthy friendship, you have to agree on every single little doctrinal thing that the Bible has to say. You know, I have friends that are some of my closest friends, and some of them are a part of different denominations, you know, or different, you know, they, they're not a part of a do denomination, you know, and they still love Jesus with all their hearts, and they're still healthy friendships in my life, you know, and so I think that you've got to give people the independence to be themselves as well. You know, I think that a lot of times we will label people as unhealthy just because there's little differences between us and them. You guys, we are the body of Christ. You know, we're not all going to believe the same and think the same and same ways. Now, I think that the core root needs to be there. You need to both be trying to chase after Jesus, trying to chase after the Bible, trying to, you know, do the best that you can to believe that you're doing what is right, you know. 
Um, but I think that we also need to show grace to people. And sometimes hearing different perspectives is good for us, ladies and gentlemen. You know, sometimes talking to people about stuff can enlarge your territory, can help you to see things in a different light that can be really good sometimes, as long as you're backing it up with scripture um, and you're sticking to the Bible. Amen. And so I think that that's really, really important. Okay, so bad company corrupts good character. So remember Jesus' model. This is your inner friend circle. Jesus loved on everybody. He outreached to everybody. But those in his inner circle that he confided in on a regular basis, he was very careful with those who he led in close to him. Okay, you guys following me today? All right. Um, let's look at the next one. This is number four. Okay. It's, this is a sign of an unhealthy friendship that they stir up, they stir up strife regularly in your relationship. If I can talk today, y'all. Uh, they stir up strife regularly. Let me read you Psalms 133.1. It says, Behold, how good and pleasant is it when brothers dwell in unity. Okay. Um, you know, Satan, one of the number one things that he likes to do in any relationship, whether it's a marriage, whether it's a friendship, whether it's someone in your family, like your interaction with the kids, he loves to stir up strife. And I have found so often that homes that are full of strife, it has a way of quenching the Holy Spirit and that anointing, you know? And so you've got to be very careful when it comes to your friendship. Some people are going to pick at and poke at things to bring up that are wrong. Hello. You know, and they're going to be people who hold on to unforgiveness. They're going to be people who do all of this stuff. And you know what, you guys, that's not healthy, okay? There will be times when you need to surround yourself with friends who are going to tell you how it is in love and who are going to hold you accountable. That's different, and that is extremely important in your friendships, okay? Um, we're going to talk about that in a second when we go over the iron sharpens iron scripture, okay? Um but I think that there's also a balance with this. Some people just nitpick. Some people you can never do anything right. Some people are constantly blaming you for stuff. You know, and that's those are cases when maybe you need to provide a little bit of separation there. Okay, because if you can't talk stuff out and if it's constantly, you know, causing strife and if you're not able to dwell in unity when you've tried to work things out, maybe a sign that that's an unhealthy friendship that you need to let go of. Okay, all right, so... Um, the next one is number one, two, three, four, five. Uh, this one is a sign of an unhealthy friendship that they put you down more than they build you up in your personal life. Amen. And this is really, really critical. You know, some people are just so negative and so hateful towards others a lot of the time. And a lot of times the root behind that is not what you would think. It's because they have this rejection that's going on themselves. And they are so works oriented. I have seen a whole crowd of Christians who this is where they come from. They are so, you know, judgmental and harsh towards themselves that it's hard for them to love on other people because they don't feel accepted themselves. They don't feel loved themselves. And so they are so hard on themselves when they're not perfect that they will go hunt down other people who are not walking in perfection as well. And so I think that that's something that you need to look for. 1 Thessalonians 5.11 says, Therefore, encourage one another and build one another up just as you are doing. Amen. So the Bible makes it very clear that, you know, yes, there are times for correction. Yes, there are times when we need to hear from friends, you know, the, the truth, you know, and we're going to get into that in a second. But I also want to tell you that the majority of the time, you know, it doesn't need to feel like a threatening relationship. You know, you need to know that they're there to build you up, to encourage you in your walk with Christ. That's a sign of a healthy friendship is it goes both ways. They're trying to encourage you, you're trying to encourage them, and you are there for each other, okay? All right, the next one is sign of an unhealthy friendship. They are disrespectful and they do not respect your boundaries. Y'all, this is a big one, this is a really big one. Um, and one of the most common things that I get people that ask me about are family situations with this. That's a whole nother topic for another day. But it's like, how do you deal with a family member or someone in your life who really doesn't need to leave? They need to stay a part of your life, but they just refuse to respect your boundaries. So I'm not going to get into that today. I'm just going to touch on the friendship side today. But I do want to tell you that it is extremely important that you watch how people respect your boundaries. When you say the word no, how do they react to that? You know, do they immediately get defensive? Do they not follow through with, you know... Or, when you try to set a precedent in a certain area and they try to push you in different areas, you know, this is extremely important, you guys, because true and healthy friends are going to respect 
normal boundaries. You know, I think that some people can be excessive with stuff, you know. Um, but in a normal friendship or relationship, it's very important to have people who respect your boundaries. Amen. And so if you see that there's someone that is not respecting boundaries, whether it's in a friendship or a relationship, that could be a sign that you need to part ways. Okay. For example, I talk to a lot of people in dating relationships, you know, they know what the Bible says about not getting physical before marriage. One partner pressures the other, whoever that may be. And, you know, the other person says, no, that's something that I am not doing with God. And the other partner says, well, if you want to be with me, that's the way it's going to be. I'm, we're going to have to go there and do this. Well, you guys, when someone is not willing to respect a boundary that you said, that could be a sign that you need to part ways from that relationship. So often I have seen people give in on boundaries that they set just because someone is not, you know, willing to respect them and it brings compromise into their walk with God. Ladies and gents, the friendships that God has for you are not going to cause you to compromise your walk with God. I'm going to say that again. The healthy friendships that God has for you are not going to cause you to compromise in your relationships or your walk with God. Amen. So that's really, really critical. Do they respect your no? Amen. And you know, sometimes there will be pushback. Okay. So if you have never set boundaries with a person and they've run over you for years and then suddenly you start trying to set boundaries with that person, they're not going to be used to that. Sometimes they're going to push back on that thing. Sometimes they're going to test you and see how far are you willing to go here. You know, can I get you to cave? But you guys got to be loving and stand firm. And, you know, eventually with that person, some people will come around. Some people, they just need a little bit of coaching. You've never done this with them before. And they're going to be fine in the long run. you just got to give them a chance, you know, to kind of get through that rocky period. But with others, they're never going to respect your boundaries, okay? That's an example of a friendship that you may need to separate yourself from because it's going to continue to stay unhealthy. And, you know, one of the number one complaints that I see from a lot of people is they will continue to yoke themselves to these unhealthy people who won't respect them, who won't respect their boundaries in their personal life. And they wonder why their life is constantly full of strife. They wonder why their life is constantly full of pain. You know, you guys, you cannot make someone like you. You cannot force someone to like you. And I think that I've seen so much heartbreak, especially in the Christian community, with people who continue to try to force someone to be in their spirit, to notice their worth, to respect their boundaries, who just, you can't change people, you guys. And so after a certain extent, sometimes you need to move forward and to embrace people who will respect you, who are there for you, you guys, because God has a whole crowd out there that wants to be that for you. And so at a certain point, you've got to be willing to cut ties and to part ways and say, you know what, there's something better over here. And I'm going to surround myself with those who do respect me and who do respect my boundaries. Amen. Really, really critical. Okay. All right. Um, I think I read you the scripture, but just in case, I'm going to read it again. Romans 12, 10. Love one another with brotherly affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Okay. And so this scripture makes it very clear that we are to surround ourselves with those who are going to show honor. Amen. It's not that they have to agree with you all the time. It's not to say that there won't be things that come up occasionally. But as a whole, as a pattern, are they showing you honor? Are they respecting your boundaries? This is really, really, really critical, you guys. Okay. All right. The next one is sign of an unhealthy friendship. They hold on to grudges against you after you have been genuinely, genuinely repentant towards them and have tried to apologize. Now, I think that this is very contingent a lot of the time upon the repentant piece, okay? A lot of people are, you know, um, just expect people to be there for them the way it was before and there was a major breach of trust in that friendship or in whatever. And one person is not repentant towards the other, okay? That person on the receiving end should be more cautious until they know that the repentant person is truly repentant, right? So that that trust can be established. We were get, forgive regardless. But I've seen relationships who have gone through, you know, someone cheated on someone else, you know. Something major happened in a marriage or in a friendship. And so, you know, those are cases where they probably are not going to want to open themselves up fully to you again. Because trust has to be earned back a lot of the time, you know. Um, but what I am talking about is if you have truly repented, let's say you were the one in the wrong. Sometimes it's them, sometimes it's you. But let's say in this case you were the one that was in the wrong and you have really tried to repent. You have really tried to demonstrate with your actions that you are, you know, doing what's best. And they just will not let up on this stuff. They will not put the past in the past. They will not forgive you. They will not let go of this stuff. You know, that could be a sign of an unhealthy friendship. 
that you need to let go because it's going to continue to harm that relationship between you guys. Amen. And so they continue to hold on to grudges towards you after you've genuinely repented and tried to apologize, okay? So Colossians 3.13 says, Bear with each other and forgive one another. If any of you has a grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord forgives you. And so that can be a sign of an unhealthy friendship is someone who is unwilling to forgive in your life. Amen? All right, let's keep going. Next sign of an unhealthy friendship is they cannot be trusted to keep your secrets slash you cannot safely confide in this person. Okay, so again, these are people in your innermost circle, kind of like with the example of Jesus and his disciples. Um, so the reason that this is really, really important is because the Bible says that gossip can separate close friends. And so you need to know that you can trust a person in your personal life. You know, are they trustworthy with your heart? You know, or the moment that something happens and you confide in them, suddenly 10 of your other friends know about it when you ask that person to keep that confidential. You know, I think that this is extremely important in your friendships, all right? So, um, Proverbs 16, 28 says, A perverse person stirs up conflict, and a gossip separates close friends, okay? So there will be a natural separation that happens over time if that person continues to break trust, if they continue to share your secrets to people. You know, let's say that you shared something very vulnerable with them. Maybe it's a sin you're trying to overcome. Maybe it's a hard circumstance that you've just been through in your life. Maybe it's an area of extreme vulnerability, you know, that you just don't want everybody knowing about. And you share this thing with them, and then they go and gossip about it to all their friends. They go talk to everybody, or they talk down about you, or they do whatever it is. You guys... You know, that's not considered a safe friendship in your life, okay? And so that may be, be, need to be someone that you don't keep in that close friend circle. You know, you can love on them. You can be nice to that person. But it may be someone that you don't need to have in that inner circle as a healthy friendship in your life, okay? All right, this is a big one. Um, second to last one here, sign of an unhealthy friendship. They lead you farther away from God's presence instead of closer to his presence. And this is huge, okay? I can honestly say God has done a lot of weeding out of friendships in my life over the years. And I can honestly say that I have less friends than I started off with, but the friends that I do have are rock solid these days. Like they just love Jesus with all of their hearts. You know, we, we disagree on some things, but in general, we're chasing after God. You know, they're just really, really good people, you guys. And so I think that when we have a healthy friendship in our lives, they're going to lead us closer to the presence of God. They're going to encourage you in, their, in your walk with God. They're going to be someone who, when you are around them, you feel motivated and inspired to stay close to Jesus. Amen. And so I wanted to read you Proverbs 27, 17. Okay. As iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. I absolutely love this scripture verse, you guys. Because, you know, if you think about, like, how knives are sharpened, you know, they, they rub each other, right? They rub off on each other, and as they do that and the friction's there, it sharpens you. You know, so just like hanging out with bad associations can get you into major trouble, hanging out with the right associations can cause you to go faster, farther, and sooner, and quicker in your life, ladies and gents. And so this is where I go back to the whole, you know, Sometimes it's good to hang out around people who are not 110% like us, you know. Um, maybe you have a background where you've overcome drugs and alcohol addiction, and you've always hung around those types of people in your life because it's familiar, because it's comfortable. Well, sometimes God will introduce you to someone that's a little bit out of your comfort zone. They love Jesus, you know, but they grew up with a very different background, a very different lifestyle, sometimes so that iron can sharpen iron. Amen. Because you know what, we learn a lot from getting outside of our comfort zone and getting to know people whose worldview, whose life is different from us. Amen. And so never be afraid to walk in friendship with people who broaden your perspective, whose personality is different from you. If they're truly trying to chase after Jesus with all their heart and you are too, you know, that can be such a powerful thing for you in your life. You know, my friend, I have a really good friend and we joke around all the time. She is just about as opposite from me as you can get, like truth talk. She really is. Our personalities are completely different. Our interests are very different in terms of what we choose to do with our free time, you know. And so we just, we don't have a lot in common, except for the fact that we both love Jesus with every ounce of our hearts. Like, we're both on fire for Jesus, right? 
And so we're, but she's one of my very best friends. Like she, we, I've been friends with her for years now, you know, and we always joke around, but I think that, you know, the reason that our friendship has been so powerful over the years is because we draw out parts of each other that the other person needs to make us a more well-rounded person, you know, in the place of friendship. So for example, you know, I tend to be more of a getter done type of person. I like things to get done. You know, I like to think about things. I'm a go-getter. She's more of the relaxed type. So when I get overthinking, when I try to get ahead of things, she goes, you need to breathe. You need to go have some God time. <laughs> you know, she's that balancing person. And you know, I'm a uh, balance for her and that sometimes she will just be too passive or sometimes she won't, um, think through things all the way before she acts on them. And I help her to go, okay, let's pause. Let's think about this before we move, you know? And so all of that to say, you guys, iron sharpens iron. And we don't need a bunch of hands in the body of Christ. We need a hand. We need a foot. We need an eyeball. We need a nose, you know? And the Bible talks about how we're all these different members of the body of Christ. We all bring different strengths. To the table and so when we only surround ourselves by those who are identical to us who have been through the exact same things who operate the exact same way that we do there's not a lot of iron sharpening iron there you guys following me there's not a whole lot of you know people who are helping to grow you and to expand you outside of your little bubble to make as great of an impact for the kingdom you know a lot of you guys who are married can attest to this so often kingdom spouses are complete opposites how many of you guys can relate to this you know i've heard so many ministers who talk about this that god would pair them with their exact opposite not always but a lot of the time and i think that the reason that god does that a lot of the time is because there are strengths that both people bring to the table when is when those things are combined it leads to such a powerful purpose and impact that they can make for the body of christ and so instead of being afraid of our differences focus on the fact do they love jesus you know do we have this thing in common are they leading me closer to god's presence or farther away from god's presence and once you assess that, that can be a great indication of whether or not that friendship is in a healthy place. Amen? Alright, next one. This is my last one because I know I've been on for a hot minute, but let's talk about this. The final sign of an unhealthy friendship in your personal life is it's all one-sided. And we kind of touched on this a little bit before, but I wanted to give you a different scripture as well to go with this, okay? So you put in all of the work with reaching out. You know, you put in all of the, you know, encouraging of this person. You're the one who's consistent. They're very inconsistent with you on different things. They take you for granted, X, Y, Z, whatever it may be, okay? You've got to ask yourself, is this person loyal to me? Or, um, or are they only there when it's convenient for them or when they can get something out of it, okay? That's a sign of a very unhealthy friendship or relationship in your personal life. There's got to be give and take, y'all. We already talked about this, but it's important, okay? So Proverbs 18.24 says, A man of many companions may come to ruin, but there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. Okay, so even the Bible gives this analogy, you know, it says you can have many companions in your life, but if they're not sticking closer to you than a brother, if they're not loyal, if they're not consistent with you, you know, if it's all one sided and they're not there with you through the fight, so to speak, it's worthless, you know, and so it's better to have a few close friends in your life that are loyal, that are chasing after Jesus, that can be counted on than it is to have a bunch of friends, but you know, they're not there for you. They don't stick closer than a brother. It's very surfacey level kind of relationships in your life. Amen. So I think that's really critical. So I think we're going to leave it there so this thing doesn't run on for forever. But I hope that was really helpful um, when you're kind of identifying different friendships and different relationships in your personal life, you guys. So I hope you have a fantastic day and I will catch up with you guys soon.